How can we compute the matrix exponential function if A has complex eigenvalues? This turns out to be surprisingly easy. Such a matrix A is similar to a C matrix, which allows us to write e to the power at into e to the power ct. And we already know how to compute e to the power ct. In this video, we will see how this procedure works, and we will also compute e to the power a2 in an explicit example. So the matrix exponential function e to the power at, where a is similar to c, so a equals pc, p inverse. So how do we compute that? Well, e to the power at is just e to the power ct, and then a p and a p inverse over there. So the only thing which changes is that you put a p and a p inverse around it, and then you have your e to the power at. Well, why is this? Small proof. Well, for e to the power 80, you use a, a Taylor series, so sum 0 to infinity divided by n factorial and then 80 to the power n. But 80 to the power n equals a to the power n times t to the power n. Now, for a to the power n, we have something nice because a equals pc p inverse, so we get for a to the power n pcp inverse times pcp inverse times pcp inverse times pcp inverse and this n times. Now what happens is that all those p and p inverses drop out, the p's and p inverse cancel out in the middle. So what you're left with is a c times c times c in the middle, so c to the power n in the middle. And the only ones left are the p in front and the p inverse, the last one. So a to the power n equals p times c to the power n times p inverse. Well, you all probably have seen this argument already when we were talking about diagonalization of matrices. Basically the same idea. So for e to the power at, uh, we plug in this p c to the power p inverse over there. So we get a p c to the power n p inverse times t to the power n. Now those p and p inverse they do not depend on n, so you can take them out of the sum. So take the p in front and the p inverse to the back. So that's what we have done in this step over here. And then c to the power n times t to the power n. You can merge this back to c times t to the power n. That's what happened here. And now you see that here between the brackets, that's just the definition of e to the power ct. So e to the power at, what we're left with is a p times e to the power ct times p inverse. So that proves our theorem. And that is really convenient if you want to compute an e to the power at explicitly. For example, in this example, compute e to the power at where we have this matrix A. Now, this is an especially nice example because earlier we already did some computations and earlier we found A equals PCP inverse with this C over here and this P over here. And if you already know this, you can write down directly what e to the power at is. Because uh, we have our c, so we can compute e to the power ct. We have a equals 3 and uh, b equals 1. So that gives us an e to the power at i times cosine bt plus j times sine uh, bt. So here we have our e to the power ct. And for e to the power at, we just put a p and a p inverse around it. And there you have already your e to the power at. Yeah, and if you like, you can do the, the, the last matrix multiplication, you can do that for yourself. And then you have it uh, written down completely. Uh, the, uh, this, uh, this answer as product of three matrices is in a, in a way a bit more insightful. Both of them are, of course, correct. So this is how you can compute your e to the power 80 if you have a 2 by 2 matrix A with complex eigenvalues.